everyone. Welcome to Reach Higher Riverside, where we share all Reach Higher stories happening in the greatest county in the nation. My name is Priscilla Grijalva, and I work at the best high school in the world. It's been a great summer. I got to spend a lot of time with family and friends. I went to the AVID conference with Dan and we had the honor to meet up with our team and we had a lot of fun. I rode a bird scooter for the first time down gas lamp. So if you guys have never done that, it's, it's a ton of fun. I'm, I almost crashed, but Dan saved my life, so thank you, Dan. I met Ken Young. He was the former Riverside County Superintendent who is now the AVID Senior Division Director. He was so nice and uh, it was an honor to meet him. I also went to the American School Counselor Association Conference in Boston. I met up with old friends and met new friends. And uh, we were talking about when Michelle Obama first introduced the Retire Initiative at the ASCA conference in 2014. And one of my friends, her name is Nancy Mahoney, she uh, gave us a quote, and this is basically how she felt the day they introduced Retire. She stated, Michelle Obama's energy lights up any room. When I saw her on stage at ASCA, it felt like finally someone important recognized all of our hard work as school counselors. And then I also got to uh, hang out with some school counselors who served on the ASCA Board of Directors and met Michelle Obama in 2014. Uh, Julie Hill, who was on the ASCA Board of Directors from 2012 to 2018. She is currently a school counselor in Indiana, and she serves on the State Leadership Board of Directors for the Indiana School Counselor Association. She's gonna share her story uh, about meeting Michelle Obama and when they introduced the Reach Hire Initiative. She also just received the ACT Region 3 Career School Counseling Award in Chicago. So congratulations to Julie. If you've never met Julie, she's amazing and she's really passionate about school counseling and helping people. We also have audio from uh, two of our students that we got to interview that met Michelle Obama and they share their behind the scenes stories about meeting the celebrities, they walk us through the day and what it was like to go through all that and speak in front of 10,000 people. And our former Reach Higher Club president, who just graduated. She's gonna share her story about the club and also what it was like to be in the audience with the I Am Becoming Tour and the UCLA Caller Signing Day. We also have audio from three students who shared their FAFSA story and why it's important to do your FAFSA, which we all know as educators that FAFSA is really important, but they wanted to share their story and hopefully help other students and even educators if they would like to use their audio. At the end of the podcast, you'll be able to hear part of the graduation speech from our principal. And on our next podcast, we will be interviewing more amazing, great educators uh, and all the great things they're doing in Riverside County. So stay tuned. Hello, uh, my name is Raul. Uh, I go to Northern Vista High School. And um, this goes out to the kids who um, has no contact with their parents or they're having uh, trouble issues with their families. Uh, all I have to say is that, I mean, it's not the end of the world. If you can't get your parents' information, there's always other ways. It's just it's just how you get to those uh, positions, if that makes sense. For me, it was kind of hard for me to talk to my mom because we haven't talked in, like, years. Like, two years. Not too long, though, but still. Um, it was kind of hard for me to call her because we don't really talk, and she's been mad at me for the things I've done when I used to live with her. And the first time I tried calling her, she picked up, and then I said hello. And I think she recognized who I was and she hanged up. And then that kind of made me feel uh, a little depressed. But then senior year, I wanted to go to college and I needed her information. So I called her again and she picked up and they kind of worked things out. And I was able to get her tax information for my FAFSA. And then now she's coming to my graduation and we're going to reunite again and try to be a family. And the message is, uh, the reason is for this, for, <laughs> the reason for this is because, um, to, to let you guys know that, I mean, just give it a shot. If you, if you really don't talk to your parents, just like give it a shot. And if that doesn't work, there's always, um, other, other ways to do it. And that doesn't work. You can go always see your counselor. She can always help you like she did help me. And uh, thank you. My name is Alan. And I wanted to tell you guys to never give up on completing your FAFSA. I have taken eight months to complete mine and it was really hard to actually get my senior page in. It was a struggle and I was a point that I almost gave up 
and I almost threw the towel in, but I really didn't. I kept on pushing forward. I kept on getting help from my counselors and actually went to my college to actually get help in personal as well. Giving up uh, FAFSA is the wrong decision because you're actually getting free money for college and UCs. It is actually the greatest thing that has helped me because it's free money for my college and it's actually helping me to pay for my tuition, books, and for getting a free ride to actually college. Hello everyone, my name is Isenia Preza and I my experience with FAFSA was that it was actually kind of difficult. When I first started out, I didn't really understand what I was supposed to do. Um, but I was able to go through with the help of my counselor and the help of those people around me, and I was able to understand what I had to do. I just want to let you guys know that no matter your struggle, um, it is possible, and you just have to reach out and don't give up because FAFSA is really important. Um, right now, I'm going to be going to a UC campus, and I will be going basically debt-free, but none of this would have been possible without FAFSA. So don't give up. Uh, even if you feel like there's no one there, there's people all around you willing to help. There's your counselor, your teacher, your friends. You just have to ask. My name is Julie Hill, and back in the summer of 2014, I was serving on the board of directors for the American School Counselor Association when we learned that First Lady Michelle Obama would be speaking at our annual conference in Orlando. To say that I was excited would be quite an understatement. She had always impressed me with such grace and class and was just such an outstanding woman. I couldn't wait to hear what she would have to, to share with us. Uh, as the date grew closer, we learned that, that our board of directors would have an opportunity to meet with, with the First Lady backstage. And, you know, even in those few minutes, what struck me the most about uh, Michelle Obama was her grace and her sincerity as she came around and thanked us for the work that we do with students. Then she came out on stage and rolled out, uh, shared a lot of her Reach Higher initiative, and she shared comments that just really validated our profession and the impact that we have on students. She did so with, with such humility. It was amazing. Since then, I've had the privilege to interact with her uh, on several occasions as she hosted the School Counselor of the Year events at the White House. And throughout those interactions, she just continued to impress me with her character and her wisdom and has always been so gracious. And I am just so grateful for Michelle Obama, for the entire Reach Higher initiative and the impact it has on students and the idea that we can all work toward that goal of higher education for students in whatever form that takes. And I'm just so excited to see the results and the outcomes of the tremendous work. Now just to kind of give you guys a heads up before we go into the student interviews, uh, we did the interview at Starbucks and uh, it was kind of loud in there, so uh, we try to help with the audio as much as we could. So we'll go ahead and go into that interview. All right, we're with the amazing students. We've got to meet Michelle Obama and our former retired class president from Northern Vista High School. So if you guys could please introduce yourself and if you could share your plans after high school. I'm Raquel, and my plans after high school is to go to United States Marine Corps. And I plan after high school is to go to United States Marine Corps and do my job as a aviation and a transit Hello, my name is Asenia Preza. Uh, right now, currently, I am going to be enrolled in UCLA in Nepal with a major in biochemistry, and hopefully that will lead to a job in the pediatric cardiology field. All right, you guys are all first-generation college students, so what made you decide to go on to college or serve our country? So for me, well, I have older cousins, and I saw them, um, all of them going into college, and they were, like, explaining to me what's the importance, because I didn't know what I was doing much until like they were talking to me so I looked up to my cousins a lot and they helped me and pushed me to want to go to college and um, my mom as well because when I was younger she went to a community college to study to become a nurse so 
they all inspired me to go. I'm fifth generation in my family to serve in a branch of the military. I decided to join the Marines because I want a challenge. They told me that it's the hardest to train. It's the hardest to do the training. And they give it a lot of they give a lot of opportunities. I also was a first generation college student and I think for me the reason that I decided to go to college was more because of my parents. They never really had the opportunity to go to college themselves and I see how much they struggle and what a difference really that makes in someone's life. And I want to be able to um, be able to not only further my career but also help out my community and my parents and people who help me. And so I re think really that was a motivating factor for me to end up going to college because I wanted to be able to give back to my community and I feel like that was something I could do. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and you were also the reacher for the commissioner of the club, which is like our president. How did you get involved with the club and then also how did you get involved with Abbott? Well, with the retired club and Abbott, they're both sort of similar. They're not exactly the same, obviously, but with the retired club, I got involved my, I want to say my junior year of high school. Uh, it just seems so far back. But um, I got involved because I heard that they had a lot of resources available for students who were like me, who didn't have a background or people to necessarily help them be able to get to college or they didn't know accessible how to take. And I got involved because Retire was a club that was supposed to um, be able to show students about the opportunities that are after high school, so college, military, um, community college, anything really. It's just to further your career. And they did exactly that. Um, so I got involved my junior year just by being able to go to the club meetings and stuff that were going on. So like even on campus, the child has some club fairs. And so I would go and I would talk to the representatives. And I got so much information. And then my senior year of high school, I became club commissioner. So I was sort of like being a club president. And, and with Avid, that was something slightly different. I got involved my... Middle school? Wow, middle school. Yeah. yeah. That was sixth grade. I went in as a incoming middle school student, and after that, I just never left. It was amazing, all the sort of opportunities that they offered. I was able to travel. I've never actually really been outside of Riverside, and to have it, I was able to go all the way up to Northern California. We went on junior trips, and it was a lot of great events, uh, great opportunities for students. I would definitely recommend it. They did a lot of stuff on campus to promote um, our students going on from our educational training, such as presentations. Um, maybe you can talk about some of the things you did as our commissioner of club, and then also share with everyone your favorite uh, reach higher activity on campus. Yeah, definitely. I was involved with a lot of the things that were going on campus, so I always tried to be able to also help the other students. I mean, I was good myself, but. Um, I felt like I knew a little bit more about the system just because of the fact that I was part of retired, part of that, and had all these resources available to me. And I wanted other students to know that they were available to them as well. So I helped out with some of the events that Ms. Cajalba hosted. So for example, the Cash for College night. It was basically when we were able to fill out our FAFSA applications and there were a bunch of RCC or a lot of people that were there to help out the students. And so basically, I would also be there as a resource because we filled out our FAFSA earlier to have it. So I sort of knew the, the process and the gist of it. So being there, I was able to help out the students who did it. And then we also had a lot of presentations in classes too to help encourage the students to be able to fill out their applications, you know, to get money for college. And so I would go there to be sort of as a peer leader and to help out the students to know that you should do it and it's a really great opportunity just because who doesn't want free money for college. Yeah. But definitely I think the most favorite of mine was the retire fairs. That would have to be it. Well more in particular is definitely the one where the military brought out their um, well basically it was an inflatable bouncy house sort of, yeah. sort of thing. Uh, so yeah. to race each other on it. I think we did, or I raised someone else. <laughs> no, I did the National Guard. I raised the National Guard. <laughs> so it was basically like um, 
a lot of students and teachers and coordinators and people all from around Rhode Vista High School, they were able to become a part of the experience and <laughs> they had an obstacle, obstacle course available for the students as well. So it was just a whole lot of fun. It encouraged the students to not only become a part of the Retired Club Fairs, but also part of the school spirit. Yeah, that definitely was a lot of fun and our school came out in the newspaper for that. Picture Mr. Ray sliding down. We'll <laughs> Head it first. Our YouTube channel so you guys can see that later. Uh, so from um, Raquel and Yosemite, you both got to see Michelle Obama at the I Am Becoming tour. It was at the Los Angeles Forum. Maybe you can talk about um, how you got aware of that. Because we were currently on a college trip and then we were kind of diverted. Can you share about your experience that day and then also about Michelle Obama? So I was really confused on what was going on because, well, with Retire, I was introduced to the Yesenia, so she like led me to it, and so I went, she, she knew I wanted to become like a cop and paramedic and study about She's like, we're going to a field trip with this film that I made at the Valley, that's what I thought, that's all I was focusing on, and then I just fell asleep in the bus, yeah, I was tired, <laughs> and then um, we just wake up at this random building, and I'm just like, where am I? I was like scared. I was like, this is not the school I know for a fact, or a military base, but I was like, okay. And when um, we saw the Michelle Obama scene, that was like the presentation the video. I was like, really cool. I was like, wait, really? I was like, this is a joke. I was like, are we being pranked? Is this like where the cameras come out? I was just like looking at my um, best friend, Alondra, and then I was looking at um, the same and then we looked at our other friend, Yvonne, and we were like, wait, really? I was like, okay. and it, was, it felt really cool. It was like the coolest thing ever. I was like, I don't know, no words to really say how I felt, or any of us felt. We were just like, oh, like speechless. Hold on, you made that story so much better because you fell asleep on the bus and woke up at a different spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so basically, to tell her what happened, we were on a trip to go see her in the Valley College uh, for technical education programs, like the fire test and stuff like that. And then we were going to go to the Air Force Base. Well, before we went to the Air Force Base, we got diverted to the Riverside County Office of Education, and there was a surprise message for the county office. And our students that were with us that day got to go. Uh, we're surprised to see Michelle Obama and Diane Dickens. So, does anyone want to share your experience with that? Yeah, I would love to. Um, so basically, I am becoming tour because Rocky covered the trip there. I was also very surprised. I did not know what we were doing at the some county building. I was like, this is not where we're supposed to go. But the I am becoming tour. It was completely amazing. Like I've never been to anything like it. So basically, we were able to go to we were able to go to the LA Forum, and what happened is we got there and we found our seats, and it was this huge building so I've actually never really been to a concert before but it kind of seemed like a concert so basically we were in the seats above and Michelle Obama was in the middle and there were some like VIP seats in the middle and everybody it was just an amazing experience because everybody was so into it like I could look to my right and I saw these ladies dancing and they were just dancing to the theme music before Michelle Obama came out and the actual thing itself it was inspiring because I've never met a celebrity but I mean meeting the first lady like that's incredible I like do not know a lot of people that have done that before yeah, um, yeah. but and it was just amazing to see Michelle Obama herself and the way she spoke she inspired so many people out there she was grounded she was not at all what I expected it was so much better than what I thought it would be yeah it was a fun day started with a message from a sergeant, Sergeant Walker. She told me that Ms. Grijalvo told her that our school was going to meet Michelle Obama and a few other speakers. Uh, Ms. Grijalvo wanted to know if I was interested to go, so answer, I answered with a yes. If there's an opportunity, I will take it. Days later, I was working at Pan Express and I received a call from Ms. Grijalvo. I didn't answer because I was working, so when I went to my break, 
I called her back telling her that what happened. She told me that I was going to be on a stage with Michelle Obama. So I was like, all right. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All right. Uh, in that moment, I was like, all right, this, this gonna be a joke. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I told her again, like, what? I was like, you're paying again, again, like, what? For real? I was kind of shocked at the moment. And my part, partners of my job saw me. I thought that something happened because I was kind of like, so speechless. Like, yeah, it's just off, a shock. Off, off and off, yeah. <laughs> so I went like back to the restaurant. And when I came back, they asked me what happened. I told them, oh, I'm going to meet Michelle Obama. <laughs> and I'm going to be on stage. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, some of my friends didn't believe me. So after the whole signing day, I show him the picture. Well, actually, he saw me in the YouTube. And some of my friends told me that he was crying. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I don't believe it. <laughs> yeah, uh, he loved and he didn't believe me until the day that came and so. Yeah, well, I remember when I when I was talking on the phone and I kept repeating myself. I remember I was like, hello, are you there? And he kind of was quiet for a while. He definitely was in shock. And I don't think he believed me at first. But um, I think it finally sunk in and he was like, what? Uh, so, yeah, so he was one of them and then... Raquel, you want to share your story? My story? A while. <laughs> um, so, like, I clocked into work, and um, earlier that day, uh, Ms. Sheffield, but my um, in- at the English teacher, she uh, was texting me on Remind, and she was like, Ms. Rojava wants your number, and I was like, why? But okay, I sent it, I was like, okay, it's normal, she probably has something to tell me about, like, college or something, you know, to inform me, so I was like, okay with it. I go into work, and, like, I was restocking, and then, like, my phone kept ringing, but like my phone from work kept ringing. Like we have a phone at work, and it was ringing. And I didn't answer because I was restocking, <laughs> and I didn't want to answer. But then like someone from the front desk like answer your damn phone, and so I answered the phone, and it was my mom. And apparently, um, Grahalva was contacted her, and she's like, "There's some good news, and you have to call Miss Grahalva." And I was like, "I'm at work," and she's like, "No, listen to me now and call Miss Grahalva." So I, I get one of my coworkers to cover for me. I'm like, cover for me real quick and don't open until I come back. I go outside and I call her and she's like, um, I have some really great news for you. And I was like, what? And then, like, I was confused. And then um, she tells me I'm going to meet Michelle Obama. And I was just like, I was in shock. I was like, um, what? I was like, I thought it was like a joke again. I was like, okay, I'm going to meet her probably like another part of her like book signing day. But when she explained to me what was going to happen, I was like, oh, okay. I was like, oh my gosh. It was really cool. I was like, I don't know, the best feeling ever. I didn't know what to say. I was like, do I cry? Do I feel good? Like, it's like a dream. I was like, do I even go back to work at this point? <laughs> I was like, do I want to go in there? And I would have left. I would have just, bye. Yeah, I told everyone at work, and because we're all young. A lot of us are really young at work that, at the bowling alley, and they were like, oh my gosh. Everyone was hugging each other. I was like, it's like we accomplished a project or something. <laughs> it was funny, but um, yeah, it was like the weirdest feeling ever because it was like so many emotions was going through in my head. I was just like, wait, what am I going to do up there? I'm so happy. How did I do this again? And I'm like, oh my gosh. I was like, what do I say? And I was just like, it was was really, it was crazy. It was actually a really crazy day. I didn't want to go back to work after, but I was like, I did. (laughs) Yeah, I remember when they first told me that you two were going to be able to meet Michelle Obama and be on stage. uh, They had to repeat themselves with me a couple times too, because I think I was in shock and I didn't really say much because I was like, is this a joke? Because if it is, I don't want to tell my students because it isn't nice. But it was like, it was, it was the best uh, feeling when it finally uh, snuck in that you guys were going to meet her and that we're going to be able to see her at UCLA. And the first thing I did was I, I texted Reyes. I like, you won't believe this. I think I'm going to pass out. Our students are going to meet her. I was so excited. So we've gone over previously what the how what our day consisted of getting into school early, trying to get the kids there. We eventually get the kids there uh-huh. one way or another because we've gone over that, that long day on a previous um, podcast. But let's kind of go through 
what were some of the highlights of, of your day there? Because you, we were in the audience, the, the three of us, Grijalva, myself, and Yusenia were in the audience. But what was, give us some of the highlights of being backstage. Like what was what was going on back there? You don't have to give the whole, not a complete breakdown, but like what do you remember? What really sticks out in your head? It's like, this is what was going on backstage when we got there. Yeah, it was like going through the secret service and actually getting in and all that. Can you share about that? Okay, so what I remember most is like, okay, after going through all the security and everything, this dude is like pushing me everywhere, right? But, like, seems like an important thing with the clipboard. And he's like, pushes me into a room. And I'm like, okay, it's just a room full of celebrities. And I'm just like, am I? And I'm like, and I look back at him and he's gone. And he's like, and everyone's like just chilling there. And I'm like, I see John Legend just talking. In, and I'm like, I'm not in the right room. Dude. I'm like, I need to get out of here. I'm like, this is not for me. And I was just like, I was just like, the first thing I was like, I should find Mark. I was like trying to find Mark. I'm like, I need someone that I know. And I was just hanging in the corner, which was interesting, but yeah. Well, when I came to UCLA, I was kind of lost. Well, I was lost all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, it took me like 30 minutes, or mostly, mostly like an hour to get in because of the security. And I was walking into a hall, yeah. and they told me to get, to get in, in a room. With a lot of people, I thought it was like, you know, like, just kind of random people. So I was also, I just went for the food. Like, <laughs> I was so hungry because I didn't eat in the morning. So I started eating, and then I was looking around, and I, I saw like a lot of families, people, and I was like, all right, <laughs> I should I found like Raquel, but there was no reception. Like it was in the basement, tiny basement. So I uh, couldn't call Carol or Alba. I was kind of nervous to call that people. And Elizabeth, thanks, Sophia. Push. No, no. I met her like. Oh, Laura Moreno. No. You um, met her after. Maroon. Maroon. Maroon from Beachwater. Yeah. yeah. So Maroon came and talked to me. So I feel better because I was alone as Raquel. So I know how she felt. Then I was just also waiting. And so they called me and they called like a few minutes, like 30 minutes, 45. We went to the next room where Michelle Obama was there. We are waiting also like other 20 minutes, like in the line. Because all of the people were, was waiting too. Oh yeah, Justin. We were trying to take some pictures, but they take off. Uh, I was like, okay. I was just gonna ask the the first time. When did you first meet Michelle? Was it there backstage, or was it was it actually on the stage? Well, hold on. Let me let me because we saw what had to be her cavalcade because there was an escortment of uh, police officers in this big black like suburban. Oh, they were yeah. like, that has to be Michelle Obama. Like, I'm just wondering, if, was she set? Yeah, she had her own room. Like, when did you first meet her? So, um, that room where Mark was talking about where they took her phones was where she was in. And in fact, even that room had its own room for her inside. Oh, really? Yeah, wow. like, even the famous people had to get in the line in order to meet her. They were like, I think their phones were taken away as well. No one was taking pictures or on their phone. Everyone, like, their bags were outside. Everyone's bags were outside. And everyone got in the line just to go see, get in that room to take a picture with her. Like, it was just like, weird. It's, a ma- it's security. It's, it's just like, a matter of security. It was a double, yeah. like, triple security. It was like a process, two process, two process. Also, off topic, Mark, I didn't try the food. How was that? Oh. What can I say? I, just wait. be honest, it's alright. <laughs> I didn't like it. So no, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> but it was food, you know? <laughs> you're hungry. You're hungry. I yeah. I think I prefer the sandwich that they give us like to the others, to the group. Oh really? Yeah. Was that bad? Because I didn't like the sandwich. <laughs> I, I think it was like sushi. kind of sushi, but sushi. okay, yeah. Okay. Or vegetables. It's like vegetables, but they want to make it vegan. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a green pudding and I looked away. <laughs> But we saw you guys, you came out on Mr. Obama's story, and then they reposted on Retire and Better Make Room. So you guys actually got a, a good picture with her. And then the other three students that were 
were with you, so they picked five students nationwide, and two were from Long Vista. The other three students that were with you, did you get to meet them? Yeah. And do you remember where they were from? Uh, no, but we can take some pictures. Yeah. Do you have it? When, when did you uh, actually, so they said that they took your phones, a matter of security, to meet Michelle Obama. When did you get your phone back? Because you both have pictures with, you both have pictures yeah, with celebrities, uh, celebrities so right? Yeah. after we took that picture, we get out of that whole room, and they give us our phone, and they told us to not take pictures of the celebrities because of their privacy. Oops. <laughs> Oops. I know. So after they call us to be backstage, no. So we went back to the room to wait again, <laughs> and then we went to the backstage, and we were just waiting. I was trying to take pictures back then because they weren't not looking at us. You were trying to, <laughs> you were trying to um, get Justin's picture. Yeah, it was like our main person, like forget John Legend. Justin, um, he's like the guy that plays the baby daddy from Jane the Virgin. Yeah, he was like really cool, and I saw him. I was like, I kind of like fangirled when I saw him. I really did. I was like, what? And I was like, but he's the number one person I regret not taking a picture with. Maybe can you tell everyone that the people you did take pictures with? We saw some great pictures of you guys. Okay, I took a picture with War Machine guys. It's pretty lit. <laughs> uh, it was really cool. So I was confused though, okay? They were like, oh, you're gonna come out with a celebrity, and I was like. That's really cool. But I guess he was looking for me, apparently. He was like trying to find me, and I was like, and then he asked if I wanted to take a picture. I'm like, you want to take a picture with me? I was like, out of all people, what? And I was like, that's pretty cool. He was like, he was really nice, and his wife was a swimmer, so that's, we got like a good conversation. Uh, we take a picture also with China and Elizabeth Banks. So before we, back, uh, we went to the backstage. Then in backstage, they give us a paper. I oh, know. What was in the room? They give us a paper so we can like, say to the people, like all plans for their after high school. Mm. And before that, they give us a partner, a celebrity. Celebrity. Yeah. And they were trying to relax us because we were kind of nervous, like in that moment, just looking at all that paper. I mean, how could you not? We were like backstage where we hear everyone yelling. It was like, okay, choice of words stuff. <laughs> where you're just like singing backstage and then Michelle Obama goes out and then people start yelling even more. So your like body trembles more. You're just like, uh, yeah. it's like that one feeling where you're like, you were like before when we were like backstage in the rooms, it was like calm. I was okay with it. Everything was fine. But then when they took us outside backstage, we're like, we're literally outside and we're about to go in. It's like, you hear everyone's yelling and you see cameras. It was like professional stuff. I was like, oh. I was like, this is not ten ten thousand people. Yeah. So around there. Yeah. Oh, we'll say that now. Yeah, <laughs> that now it's, it's over. It's yeah. over, but I was yeah. like, whoa. I I had to like close a lot of people out. I acted like there was a little bit of people. But it was crazy. Could you see out in the in the crowd? Like how, how much oh, could you see? Yeah, they took Mark and I to the side of like the backstage and they're mm. like, You guys wanna see the people? And um <laughs> Mark and I were like, Yeah, and then we go. We see and they take us where the cameras are and people are like fixing and like, audio and stuff and we look to the side and we see people, like I mean it was packed. And then I was trying to find one shirts, like to find like retire and stuff and I'm like, All right, where's everyone? But there was so much people we couldn't see you guys. It was all Well uh, what could, how much could you see? Like from the stage? From the stage I was able like, was it overwhelming, or could you only see back so far because of the lights? Or? It was overwhelming packed. Like, it was, like, those concert packs where you were just like, ah. <laughs> it, was cra- it was crazy. It was, like, interesting. But it was, like, a good feeling, too. We were like, okay, I got this. So, my partner was a bear bush. Oh, yeah. She was Sophia really, bush. yeah, she, she, she was really nice with me, like, giving confidence before I get it on the stage. And... After that, we I talk and she just told me like relax, you're gonna be fine. I was like okay, I will try my best, all right. And she when she read my paper that I was going to be married, she was like proud of me because one of their families was like part of the police charge too. I don't know what I'm going to. 
I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. And then, yeah, you did a great job. And then you, you stopped the stage, and they were going to take the microphone from you. And then Michelle Obama was like, no, 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 let him talk. What did Michelle Obama say to you in that moment? Do you remember? I saw her pat you and say it's okay, keep going. Yeah, I thought they were going to take the microphone. And I was going to leave, but yeah, I feel like. Oh, yeah, she, she gave me an opportunity. So I take it, I, sh I shout out to. So Mr. Calva and Mr. Chavez, uh, also from the side sergeant. And after I went to the backstage again, that's when I met, well, I talked to Laura Moreno, also with all their celebrities. They were like, oh, kind of congratulations, uh, Mark. I was like, oh, thank you. So when I, they talked to me, I saw the opportunity, and I take a lot of pictures with them. <laughs> So the security can't say nothing to me. <laughs> I mean, you're lucky. You got a shout out. I was the first person to go up, so I was afraid to break out of my lines. I was like, do I break my lines or do I get in trouble? And I'm like, I wanted to give shout outs to everyone as well, but then I was like so scared. I was afraid to like. I just looked in the screen where I said my lines. I'm like, I'll just repeat that, and I was like, okay. But I was like, when I saw Mark give out a shout, I was like, wait, Mark was not allowed to do that? And I was like, what? And I'm like, that's not fair. But that was really cool. He did great. But yeah, I wasn't allowed. I think. Did you get mad? No, they didn't get mad. They didn't say you did great. No, yeah, let, me, let, me give, let me give you a tip there. As soon as somebody gives you a light mic, they can't stop what you're doing. Yeah, once, it, once it's out there, it's yeah, out there. It's, it's out too there. late. Yeah. I mean, look what Kanye did. I'm and, just kidding. Right, yeah. But it, it, was, it was classy, at least. It was classy. It was. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, like a little note, well, actually, something small that I think Mark was still off stage is when um, the girls and I were in the back. I don't know. I think you were taking a picture with one of the celebrities. Michelle Obama was this um, security backstage, and she kind of like pushed him out of the way. And she was talking to me and the, and the girl that was going to UCLA. I forgot her name. And she was just talking just like a normal person. No, what did she say to you? She was just like, "So how do you guys feel?" And we're like, "We feel great. Were you with us?" Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it felt weird, right? She just like got out of the way for me to let um her security. She was just talking as like a normal person. I'm like. This is not normal. But at the moment, she like when she saw the woman, she started crying. Was, like the happiness. Yeah, she was like the girl that's going to use today. She started crying. Well, I was like, this is not right. You're not supposed to talk to us. I'm like, you're too famous for us. I was like, <laughs> but yeah, she was really cool. She was asking us about our plans, and she's like, I'm so proud of you guys. And I was like, thank you. Aww. Yeah, it was great to hear that from her. Also, she gives really warm hugs. Mom, like, after that, we went also to the room again, and I was kind of lost again because their coach told me like we we have to back, we, we need to get back to the, uh, our group. So I was like, ah, don't worry, there you're gonna wait for us. So I was trying to take all the pictures with Laura. Talk to her, like, hey, can I take a picture with you? Like, yeah, and, and then uh, she gave your friend a shout out, huh? Yeah. Oh, that was in backstage. Uh -huh. I mean, in the room. Uh -huh. There was a picture of the camera. So I take a uh, <laughs> picture with uh, her at that moment. Yeah. yeah. Mark was having fun with his wife over there. <laughs> well, I, uh, I appreciate you giving her the shout out. And uh, I, uh, that made me teary eyed. Uh, actually, when you had done it, I didn't even know what was going on because I was in the audience and we were screaming so loud um, until I left and uh, one of our teachers, Mrs. Rafferty, was like, they gave you a shout out on stage. And I was like, no, I don't think so. I think it was just over here. And so then when I saw the video later, I was really crying. So thank you. And uh, maybe Yesenia and Mr. Reyes could share their experience in the audience who were excited on stage. Oh, you first. Well, I didn't actually get to meet the celebrities like Mark and Raquel, but it was crazy just seeing them up there like when they came out there was only I think five students that were actually there and two of those five were from Norda Vista I think that was amazing but they came out and you could just hear because I was surrounded by Norda Vista students so you could just hear them go crazy like I personally I'm friends with Rocky so we we're all just like we know her and we were just all shouting and it was so much fun and it was so cool because like you i I mean, I personally have not met someone who's actually been up and personal with Michelle Obama, and just to see her up there, I was like, oh my god, I'm so proud of her. Yeah. 
all our buses got separated when we got there because the organization, as I we talked about this before, the organization of how everybody got in was they left something to be desired. So we were all separated, all three buses. So we were all in different sections. So the bus that I was on, because we went in kind of all together because they followed me up uh, to where I was because I was kind of the head chaperone on the bus that I was on. Uh, by the time we got in, we ended up on the second floor to the side, which was actually a really good view. It wasn't a straight on view, but it was really good because we were a little bit closer than the section that Priscilla uh, was in. We were just up a level. And we took up a good portion of that section. So we had that whole bus full of students. And then when, yeah, when you guys came on stage and they announced you were from Northern Vista, the section went crazy. Everybody was just big cheering and yelling and just, it was, yeah, it was kind of surreal to see, to get excited for, hey, those two kids from our school, not just one, there's two kids from our school. So everybody was really happy about that. And the whole thing, like you said, everybody was screaming. It got, it got louder and louder as, as Michelle Obama was on there. And uh, it was just really inspiring with what she was saying. And we had a couple of former students who were there too graduates who are now in college that were there they commented to me too I, I needed to hear that I needed to hear what she said is you know things get rough sometimes and it's just like nope keep going keep plugging away at what we're doing okay. um, the whole day was just amazing and it seemed like it was literally two seconds but it wasn't it just because it was like so much fun and to be there and um, I appreciate you guys being on stage and like um, our whole school had worked so hard uh, with everyone, the staff and the kids. So to see that dream come true was pretty surreal. I do have a, a question for you guys. So what was your favorite part of the signing day? Maybe you can share your main thing that you learned, that you heard from Michelle Obama or any of the celebrities or even you studied. If there's something you remember you learned that stood out for you. So sadly, because of like all the yelling, we were able to hear her um, wonderful speech. But I know she gave like a great speech because she has that, I don't know, she has like that feeling where when she like says a speech, it's very inspirational and it really touches your heart. But um, what um, really did I remember the most is when, she, when we were backstage after like going out and she just came up and talked to us. Um, it felt good when she was like, I'm really proud of you guys. And she was like, you guys could do it. You guys are like the future. You guys could, are going to accomplish so much. You and everyone else, your guys' school, everything. And it felt really good. And I was like, it kind of hit me. I was like, oh my gosh, a few months I'm going to graduate or a few weeks. And I'm like, what? And then like, she like the first lady, like, to, or the former first lady was like, you guys are going to be like the future. And it's true. I didn't think of it after she <laughs> pointed it out. And I was like, it's true. We're going to be the future. We're going to be carrying on the rest. After. It was really inspirational. My favorite part was when I awesome. met those people. They make a difference with me. You know, Michelle Obama, Lyle Moreno, that's a favorite. Those three people make a difference in my life. Because now I feel like I accomplished all my goal, almost. Because my last goal right now is to become a Marine. So I met the first former lady and some celebrity. So I'm glad to meet those people. Yeah. Did you remember anything that stood out that you learned that day? Are you screaming too loud? <laughs> well, I think for me, uh, there was so much noise going on that it was just, we couldn't necessarily really hear, but when she started to. Um, actually speak the theater the stadium it got really silent like everyone was just paying attention they were closely listening to what she was going to say and i think what definitely stood out of her speech was her just saying i mean i know it's sort of cliche but she was just telling us like to never give up and that no matter what everybody else tells us that we are the ones who can decide what we do and we shouldn't listen to what they say. And I think to me, even though I've heard that statement like a million times, but just hearing it come from her, I was like, you know what, you're right. Like, yeah. I was just thinking in my mind that I should definitely listen to not only her, but everyone else who's telling me that and that I can, you know, change my future. I can be the, the person who can accomplish anything I want to. All right, so at the end of our podcast, we do the Sunshine Spotlight. Can you each give us at least one thing that made you happy Okay, so today, um, I was working. I'm a lifeguard now. No more, no more boring now, guys. Um, and um, there was this little kid, uh, like, little, little, little kid just 
walking her around, and she was just like, randomly, I was like, life guarding you, she just sat next to me, and I'm looking at her, and she was just like, you're so sweet. And I was like, hi, and she was just like, I want to be a lifeguard like you. And then it just touched my heart. I was like, this little kid's so cute. <laughs> so that was my, like, happy time. I do think that happened to me this way was well, that I went to run. And I think that's it. And I want to say something else that I didn't say before. But when you are with Michelle Obama and you're like next to her, you feel like she's like a mother to you because she she give you confidence, like a lot of confidence, and you want to be like next to her like all the time. You you don't want to be separate from her. And all those words that she said, like, inspired to do something better in your life, like, be the greatest person in the world. That was amazing. <laughs> How can I top that? How can I top that? Um, well, I think for me this week, uh, something that made me extremely happy was, well, recently I started, I used to be a volunteer at Kaiser, and I started to intern there. And so, being in that sort of environment, I meet a lot of people and doctors, and it's, like I said at the beginning, it's been my dream to be a doctor myself, and so I was meeting with some of the people, and back in my middle school, I had the opportunity to be a part of something called the Hippocrates Circle, so basically they encourage younger kids, and so at one of my work days, I was there, and the leader, and you know, since middle school has been a while, the leader remembered me. I was like, oh my god, like that's crazy, and it just made me really happy because I was like, maybe I can do this. Like you know, I I have connections, maybe it, it is possible, and it was just like this awe-inspiring moment for me. Well, if you know me, you know I'm a huge, huge, huge Star Wars fan. Yes. <laughs> so I've actually had the opportunity a few times this summer to go to Star Wars Land at Disneyland, but this last week I actually went at night for the first time, and I watched the fireworks from there at night, which is it's beautiful. It's beautiful to see the way they have the land and the fireworks up above the, the spires that they have there. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Work-wise, I haven't thought about it. <laughs> so we will in a few weeks start thinking about work. So stuff will be more related to that in a couple weeks. Yeah. I was a little shook enough last night at 7.1 earth today. And I'm from Texas. I'm not used to these things. Everyone else probably yeah. is. But, uh, I don't even feel any of them. But, uh, but what did make me happy was I went to Boston for the National School Counselor Conference. And I've never been there, and I got to meet my friends and new friends from all over the country and uh, people that are passionate about school counseling and helping kids and just learning new things and bringing them back to our school. So that was awesome. I've never been there, and I loved Boston. It's so pretty. If you guys have never been there, you need to go. And I also got to tour Harvard University. Uh, one of my students just graduated there. Um, she got to live the last four years. But I'm really proud of her. Her name's Sophia. She just graduated. Alright, so that's the end of our podcast. Thank you guys so much. If you could all just say goodbye to everyone out there listening. Thank you for hearing this podcast. And I think it's so nice. Enjoy your day. Me too. Have your day. <laughs> Thanks. This is so exciting. Bye. Thank you for taking time to hear this podcast. And um, hope to hear from someone else up in this podcast soon as well. And thank you, Kim Strahalva, Mr. Reyes, for talking to us today. Yeah, if you guys made it this far, I hope that something we said has touched you or maybe um, you learned something from us or that it inspired you to maybe also follow your dreams. Um, I'd like to thank you guys for having me here, Mr. Reyes, Mr. Strahalva. It was great seeing you guys again. And well, I hope you have guys have a rest of the day. I hope you guys have a nice rest of your summer. <laughs> We have a simple motto, and we just said it, and we'll say it again. Once a brave, simple as that. However, class of 2019, you're also unique in your own ways. Here are just a couple facts that make your class unique and very accomplished. 90% of you submitted your financial aid applications. Very good, very good. With the help, thank you, counseling department. 90% of you have applied to continue your education or training. Be that in the military, university, community college, trade school, or apprenticeship program. Thank you. Good job, guys. Thank you, counseling department.
Five seniors nationwide got to be on stage with Michelle Obama on signing day, and two of them were from Norta Vista. <laughs> nationwide. Thank you for tuning in to Reach Higher Riverside. You can follow us on Twitter at RH Riverside. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at Reach Higher Riverside. You can also subscribe to our iTunes or Google Play Music and give us a rating. Thank you so much for listening in. We appreciate all of you tuning in. And as Michelle Obama would say, when they go low, we reach higher.